The letter Anastasia received from her husband had been dictated to his lawyer, the only way, he wrote, of getting past the prison authorities. The allegations it contained hit her like a ton of bricks. That night I thought my heart would jump out of my chest. I thought this must be what it's like to have a heart attack or a stroke. Abuse from prison staff, says Ildar Dadin, began soon after his September transfer to Penal Colony 7 in northwestern Russia. Over the course of that day I was beaten a total of four times by 10 to 12 people at once. They would kick me. After the third beating, they lowered my head into a toilet right there in the holding cell. Dadin says the prison's chief threatened to kill him, that they told him he'd be raped and that he was hung by his wrists with his hands cuffed behind him. If I am again subjected to torture, beatings and rape, it is unlikely that I will last more than a week. In case of my sudden death, you may be told that I committed suicide, had an accident, was shot while trying to escape, or died fighting with another prisoner. But this would be a lie. My murder would have been planned in advance to eliminate witnesses and victims of torture. He says this would be worth it if other prisoners are inspired to speak out. He might be ready to sacrifice his life, but I'm not ready to sacrifice him. Ildar told the lawyer he won't last more than a week like this. I thought if I publish this story, it will create noise and somehow protect him. Ildar Dadin is in prison for protesting against the jailing of other opposition activists. He's the first person to be convicted under a controversial new law which punishes anyone who repeatedly violates the established order by organizing or holding meetings or rallies. Amnesty International, which had its Moscow office shuttered by city authorities this week, has called Dadin a prisoner of conscience who should be released immediately. It, it is shocking, but uh, I don't think we should be very much surprised because uh, it's part of the ongoing trend. What is, it is what is happening in Russian prisons. The Federal Penitentiary Service acknowledges that force was used on Dadin when he supposedly wouldn't leave his cell, but that independent doctors examined him and found no signs of torture. The investigative committee says that its preliminary inquiry does not support Dadin's allegations. But this is a case that's gone right to the very top. Vladimir Putin, according to the Kremlin, has been kept informed and updated on the situation. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Moscow.